Bob, how good do you think this Texas defense is? Because they have really good players. They've given up a lot to OSU and West Virginia, but they're they're a talented bunch. Yeah, they are talented and 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 a good bunch. And 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 again, it's 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 hard to determine. You know, having you know the 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 gauging the offenses with Oklahoma State and West Virginia, and how much is it them? How much is it you know, uh, you know they've uh, you know. So anyway, they they you know I, I believe they're a, a really good defense when you look at them, the personnel running around, and they can get you in some bad plays. They've been big force in uh, getting to the quarterback, getting sacks, getting getting some turnovers. So you just have to be. Hopefully you can block them up when they are stunning and sometimes create your own creases, I think, is what's happened. Sometimes, as people always think, blitz is always the answer. Sometimes you blitz right into what they want you to. You know, um, I know we're always very aware of that defensively. So um, anyhow, so I think that's happened a little bit. Bob, in the secondary, <laughs> you guys are playing. how well are you playing back there? Uh, really well. I thought the guys were excellent. Um, you know, uh, really, the the last several games they've they've really covered well, and that's a team you don't hold down much like that. Not many people have. You said that Coleman is emerging as one of the best corners you could coach. He, he says he's priding himself on being more physical. Could you talk about that angle of this game? That well, if corner can only be so physical. As I mean, he Aaron has no problem. You know, he played safety a year ago, coming up tackling those kind of things, and. He just, he's a great cover guy. He's a great athlete. Uh, he's got great ball skills, um, and he's highly competitive. I mean, he's, he's a guy that really takes pride every day in how he plays. Um, and even out there against the scout team, he, he can't stand it if they catch one ball on him. So he's, uh, you know, he's really playing great. Just how versatile is he? I mean, we saw him making plays at the line of scrimmage, blitzing breaking passes off 40 yards down here. Uh, Aaron could play anywhere. Like I said, he played the whole year a year ago at safety, and if we played him there, he'd, he'd be a great safety too. So um, he can do, you know, whatever you need him to do, really. I mean, he's got size. He's got, again, great ball skills, and, and he's tough. You didn't seem all that fired up about the interference call on well, they can't hear me on the other side, you know, and there was no sense. I was yelling at the guys on my sideline. They didn't seem to care. They didn't make the call. So I guess my only feeling was my, what I was saying to them is if they're going to call it that way on that side, on that sideline, why don't you call it the same way on this sideline? That's what I think all coaches just want it to be called similarly, you know, not, not different on one side of the field than, than on the other. Um, Aaron himself seemed to ramp up his game after that. He sort of took over after that with a variety of big points. Well, I'm, I'm sure it made him angry, you know, that he didn't feel he, he, he did interfere him. And so. Well, the, I mean, everybody's asking questions that we asked last year about how the defense has stopped these offenses. I mean, one of those things is, you know, calling, making those calls on <coughs> pass interference, offensive holding, whatever. Can officials do something to make more of an emphasis on what is and what is not? You know, pass interference to, to give some of these quarterbacks a chance to have more success. Uh, I think it's again, it's just all judgment. I mean, that we're we're aware of of how they're supposed to call it, you know, and and then it just gets down to judgments. Um, I, I think you just have to stay competitive with it, and and uh, you know, that's all you can do as a DB. Um, and and hope their judgments again, as long as it's. As long as it's the same for both teams and on both sidelines, not not one crew on one sideline calls it one way, and this and the other two guys on the other sideline are, are calling it a little bit. Hey, like in basketball, let's let them play a little bit, and the other side is saying, no, we're not going to let them play a little bit. Is, I mean, is there anything that when you see the way calls are made that, that you wish that there would be more emphasis or, or things aren't? Well, I, 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 yeah, one thing that just really bothers me is, is offenses can do about anything to a DB, and they hardly ever call offensive pass interference where DBs barely touch a guy and, and it's interference, you know. And I, I'm not saying us. I'm saying across the board it seems that way. I guess Chris Spielman said on the broadcast that you don't have NFL-type talent on defense. Well, I don't, you know, that's – what is Chris Spielman? I mean, you know, that, that doesn't matter to me, his opinion. I mean, well, I, bet, well, I bet we end up having guys in the NFL, so. As good as your pass protection was 
at Tech keeping Landry as clean as, as he did. Does Texas not represent a step up in class in terms of Okafor and, and Jeff Coat? Oh, they're yeah, they're great uh, rushers and, and defenders, and uh, so definitely they're they're a handful to, to manage and handle. Uh, there's no question about it. Priority one: protecting Land Landry. Sure, and and running the ball. You talked about how the bye weeks kind of prevented you from showcasing the improvements that the team made in practice for two weeks at a time. What sort of changes do you expect to see in the team's attitude and performance now that? Every week is a game week, and you're going to be practicing. I just, I just expect them to continue to, to work hard and in and, and, and practice and, and in their preparation. And hopefully, if we could start, you know, as we start playing week to week, we can, you know, continue to take steps and make improvements, you know, on the field. Does this game have any different feel to you since you both have a loss, both lost at home, and you're not? No. Usually you guys are playing for the title the second week of October. Now you're just, the winner stays alive, the loser's probably eliminated. No, it doesn't have any different feel to, to not, not in my eyes. You still have that same uh, thirst and uh, competitive fire for this 14th as you did for the third and the fourth? Uh, how can you not? I mean, you know, I know. <laughs> I know what it's like to walk down the tunnel, pull into the stadium, and 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 the importance of this game. So, uh, absolutely, uh, it's impossible not to continue to be excited about it. We asked some of the players earlier about what it's like to walk down that tunnel. Can you describe it a bit? Uh, it's just incredibly exciting and exhilarating. You know, it's just uh, it's it's what you want in in sports. You know, and in, co in competition. Do you have a sense of the history when you're doing it? I mean, is it, it's not like this at Kansas State, at Kansas, at Iowa State, at Tech. Is it? Do you have a sense of everybody that's come before you down that tunnel? No, not when I'm walking down it. Okay. <laughs> that's the last thing I'm thinking about. I'll think about that when I'm on a rocking chair somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully on a rocking chair somewhere. Hopefully. <laughs> you talked about David Ass's improvement. Where have you seen it, uh, the most improvement out of him so far? I, I just overall, you know, execution, throwing the football and knowing where he wants to go with it and, and uh, you know, throws a good ball, you know, accurate. So he, he does a good job. Bob, you used the dozer twice on third and three. Made it once, didn't make it once. Is that, is that sort of the outside of how, how long you want? need for the first down yeah, it's, or you, did you do that to set up other stuff later in the season or what was And that? I think it's just different in all situations how you know the the first time you you gain 8 yards on it you feel a little more all right that third and two stretched to third and three and then you you know and if you don't pick it up the next time we're well probably more third and two you know so I think it's more more how you know uh, how much <clears throat> You know, we feel confident in it and, when, and how they've been dealing with it. And uh, so, you know, I, again, it's always going to be a little bit different. Why don't you throw out of it? That'll surprise people. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, somewhere down the road we may. In the end, it's, uh, it's one of those situations if, you know, yeah, that sounds great as long as you complete it, you know. And, and if you don't, then everyone's thinking, why don't you just run it and pick up, get a whole new set of downs. So, um we're, you know, we'll we'll keep running it the way we have, and I'm sure we'll have some wrinkles to it. What do you see in Gray, and particularly him from the Wildcat? <laughs> Just, you know, very quick. Um, you know, excellent running back. All those guys uh, run the ball well. Fine seams. You know, got uh, excellent speed and make good cuts. Um, and they, you know, they're they're in that Wildcat a fair amount too. You know, so that's something that we'll have to spend a lot of time on.